Chicken Nuggets is like my family. Bacon is good for me. She's out like she's the queen, and we're the sorry people. Never see this face again. Right, so King Curtis is without a doubt Wife Swap's most infamous spoiled brat. For a young man so set in his ways, having his life flipped upside down meant he absolutely hated every second of being on the show. Yet somehow, with his iconic lines and unique perspective on life, he captured the heart of the nation. Today, we're going to be looking at that legendary episode as well as where King Curtis is now. So let's just get straight into it. Curtis Holland lives in North Carolina with his mum, Ginger, his dad, Cliff, and his sister, Courtney. The family run a pine straw business, working as few hours as possible to get them by financially so they can maximize the amount of time they get to spend together as a family having fun. For them, the kids' happiness is number one priority, meaning the kids get to sleep whenever they want, eat whatever they want, and do whatever they want. And eating tasty food is the thing they love doing most. We're definitely not calorie counters because we can't count that high. Fried food is the only way to go. If we could find a way to fry a salad, we may try it. So the family are evidently big on eating, and one type of food in particular is Curtis's favourite. In fact, he's such a picky eater that it may be fair to say that it's the only food he likes. And because his parents don't like saying no to him, whether it's breakfast, lunch or dinner, he will ask for, and he shall receive, chicken nuggets. Yay! I really do like chicken nuggets. They're good. Curtis, what you want for breakfast? Chicken nuggets. Okay. Chicken nuggets is like my family. And there we have our first iconic quote. Anyway, in general, Cliff and Ginger don't believe in being strict or telling their kids what to do. Their parenting philosophy is essentially, if it makes them happy, that's all right with me. And it seems that philosophy has rubbed off on Curtis. You don't have to say, you better pick it up now or I'm getting a flash water. Don't have to be that mean. You can be nice or you can leave my house. I love how he calls it his house. He really does own this place. Like his sister, pretty much everything he wants, he gets. But Curtis expects, and indeed demands, much more than that. In fact, the family accommodate their entire lives around him. And he even calls his mother his maid, which is how he earned his iconic nickname. They call me King Curtis because I am the king of the house, baby. He may be king of the house now, but unfortunately for him, that is all about to change because his mum is on the way out and incoming Joy is about to bring him anything but. Joy runs four boot camps every single day starting at 5.30 a.m. and she carries that discipline over into her home. For the mother of two, raw vegetables, hard work and fitness are the only things on the menu and she's going to be taking no prisoners. Fitness means the world to me. If you need to throw up, you need to go to the bush, throw up, and then come back over here and jump in the game. Unsurprisingly, her brutal mentality carries over into her family life. When it comes to her kids, the pursuit of excellence comes before having fun. And even then, chances to have fun are few and far between. With Father Demarcus working long hours throughout the day, the kids don't get to see him much. And with Joy working hard herself and prioritizing her own lifestyle, the kids are often left to entertain themselves. On the scale of one to ten in fun, my house is one. Every now and then they may want to do a play date and just go, but that's rare, like once every three months. So it's quite clear that the two families have the balance wrong and the kids are suffering as a result. Hopefully both sets of parents can learn from the experience and find a healthier balance between work and play, not just for themselves, but for the children too. For now though, with them being at complete opposite ends of the spectrum, there is a massive culture shock awaiting both families as they all get set for the polar shift. And with that, it's time for the two week wife swap to begin. On the first day, everyone clears off, giving the wives a chance to explore their new homes before meeting their new families. Oh my goodness, this is candy. Whipped cream, sugar, fat, fat, fat. The thought of eating anything that's in this fridge makes me wanna puke. So with those poor first impressions, shortly after the family arrives and Curtis wastes no time in putting his foot down. He says he's used to eating what he wants and doing what he wants and swiftly demonstrates his powers by asking his dad to go to the shops, which are a 15 minute drive away to get him a specific type of biscuit. And of course, Cliff obliges. Offended at how easily Cliff bowed to his demands, Joy decides to give Curtis a grounding reality check. 
That's a kid's dream to do whatever they want to do, but that's not reality to do what you want to do every day. If you tell them to do this, do that, do that, and do this, you know what they're going to do? What? They're going to be miserable. And to be fair, both have valid points. Curtis can't just get his way whenever he wants and expect that to be a healthy way to live. But at the same time, Joy can't expect her kids to live such restricted lives and still enjoy their childhoods. I mean, Curtis doesn't even know the kids, but he's right. They are miserable. Despite his wisdom though, even he isn't immune to getting things wrong sometimes. When you do eat something, mm -hmm. your body really does like it. I think Joy's too skinny and she needs to eat a little bit and be happy. That's how I do it. It's not just Curtis who thinks that the Brown family way of life is wrong either. Cliff takes Joy out to help him gather bales of pine straw and whilst they're out there, she tries to convince him to sell all the cars, junk and scrap metal on his land rather than using it for the demolition derby. And she even goes on to tell him to work more hours so that he can earn more money. Cliff, however, doesn't believe you can put a price on the time that he gets to spend with his wife and kids. Those people don't spend any time with their family. The wealthier people are the most miserable. That's a stereotype brought on by a poor mentality. I'm poor, but I'm happy. I'm fat, poor, and happy. I mean, at the end of the day, this all comes down to personal preference. Cliff wouldn't be happy living life the way Joy lives it, and Joy wouldn't be happy living life the way Cliff lives it. Take the demolition derby, for example. It's the family's favorite pastime. They will spend time working together building up a car, and then Cliff drives it in a derby. By the way, for those like me who had never actually seen one of these before, it's basically a giant royal rumble, where a bunch of cars drive around a big mud pit crashing into each other, until only one is left running. To Joy, that may seem like a waste of time and money, but for the Holland family, it's both well spent. Preparing for and going along to the derby brings them far more joy than anything else they could spend that time doing, or anything they could ever possibly buy with the money they spend on it. Money is the only thing in this woman's mind. Whether she wants to admit it or not, that's a miserable, miserable woman. Well, after a week of joy living miserably by the Holland family rules, it's time for week two. Now, Curtis, Cliff and Courtney are gonna have to do things her way. And her two key priorities for the week are getting the family more active and getting them to eat healthier. Your diet is disgusting. I guarantee that you will immediately start to feel better and have more energy as soon as you start my meal plan. I don't want Sit to down, eat vegetables. Come. Nobody in this house does. They're happy the way they are. Unfortunately, as much as Curtis wants to protest, Joy is in control and his diet is about to change whether he likes it or not. One third thing she'd like to change, if possible, is the family's mindset. Being content with a normal life shouldn't be enough, according to Joy. So she wants to take them to expensive shops and to view million dollar houses to give them something to want to work hard towards. I'm going to take you motivational shopping to help you visualize the finer things in life that will add to your happiness. That's all you care about is money. money, money, money. We don't care about money. You do. A humble rebuttal, but despite their objections, Joy kicks into gear straight away. The first priority is the diet, so she's brought with her two giant tubs with the word junk painted on them. And she wants the family to help her load them up with all the junk food in the house so that they can bin it. I need you guys to help me in the kitchen to fill these. Very happy to be throwing this away. It's bacon. No, I want my bacon. I gotta tell you something. Bacon is good for me. Poor Curtis is losing his mind, and in his fit of rage, he delivers one of his most infamous lines. Bacon is good for me. His reaction might be a little bit intense, but I don't know what Joy was thinking. Ripping all the junk food away from the family in one big go was never going to go well. At least slowly make the move by swapping some things for healthy snacks and throwing the occasional vegetable and bit of fruit in here and there. Or maybe even just educate him as to why bacon might not be the healthiest option. But forcing them to quit cold turkey like this was never something King Curtis was going to stand for. She thinks, at the blue, she's a smart little girl that she can do whatever she wants. No, that's not how she can do it in our family. She's acting like she's the queen and we're the sorry people. And of course, he wasn't having any of it. This was his home, his kingdom. He did things his way around here. If he wanted bacon for breakfast, chicken nuggets for lunch, and chicken nuggets again for dinner, he was going to have them. And he certainly wasn't gonna let Joy stand in his way. Joy, I have been nice to you, but now 
I'm coming to the edge. So he stands up to her and tells her that he's sick of her already. He doesn't want to throw out his favorite foods. He doesn't want to start a diet. He doesn't want to change his lifestyle and he doesn't want any of it up for debate. He's not interested in anything she has to say. He just wants her gone. I promise you one thing, okay? If you do not have at least one food that you like, I will buy you a piece of junk. Is that a deal? No, I keep losing at deals and I don't want to make a deal anymore. I love all the subtle encouragement he keeps getting from his dad. The little pats, the arm around the shoulder, the repeating what he's saying. You can tell Cliff is just as frustrated as Curtis. He just doesn't want to say it. I am leaving and you can't stop me. I'm packing my bags. And a very, very calm day into this. A bump in the road comes and she be sarcastic. Now I know what you're thinking, the old I'm packing my bags bluff. We've seen grown adults pull this classic in 90 Day Fiancé on this channel many times. But this is no ordinary person. This is King Curtis we're talking about. And when he says he's going to do something, he means it. I won't be coming back until Saturday when you leave. She's going to try to stop me, but she can't run those little high heels. Never see this face again. Now, obviously, they couldn't just let him wander off into the night and fend for himself. There are wolves, cougars, and bears that wander the forests of North Carolina. The poor creatures wouldn't stand a chance against a riled up Curtis. That said, the producers did want to give him the time and space that he asked for. So he went over to his grandmother's house, where he spent the next few hours eating chicken nuggets and planning his next move. Then, once he was ready, he returned to his domain, locked and loaded. I'm back from Ray to tell her who's boss. Me! King Curtis! Where's Joy? You'd have been forgiven for thinking he'd come back in a sleepy state having eaten half his body weight in chicken nuggets, but he is fired up and ready to go. I kind of wish they'd brought some of the cameras to his grandma's house so we could have seen the pre-match pep talk. I bet she was backing his every word and hyping him up like crazy. And no doubt the producers egged him on too a little bit because this is TV gold. Are you in again? Are you part of the team? Nope. I'm on another team on this one. What team are you on? Having fun. My name's King Curtis. I still in business with you. Now Cliff and Curtis are very much a rebellious duo. Curtis isn't going to give in to Joy's demands and neither is his father. The day after, having gathered all the junk food in the house, Joy places it outside and tries to channel the family's love for demolition by telling them to destroy it. But unfortunately for her, Cliff was having none of it. I'm not beating food up in my backyard. End of story. Curtis and Courtney follow suit by abandoning their bats and refusing to partake. So Joy grabs hers and much to the distress of the family, destroys it all herself. And without mercy or hesitation, she goes wild. She went into a zone of, of anger and rage against food. The poor, helpless, defenseless food. Well, with the junk food now destroyed, Joy wants the family to move on to the psychological side of her revolution. As part of her envisioning success method, she takes them to view a multi-million dollar house on the lake. But for Cliff, all it does is make him realise that materialistic things just aren't what's important to him. She wants to come home to a $15 million house. I want to come home to a $50,000 mobile home with my kids. I'm crying because I'm sad for Joy and her family. I absolutely love that he's got his priorities straight, but to be fair to Joy, the two aren't necessarily mutually exclusive. I mean, you can still have dreams of coming home to a $15 million house with your kids still in it. But then I guess to even come close to achieving that dream, he'd have to sacrifice a lot of time with his family. So in a realistic world, maybe they are mutually exclusive. I think he's just content knowing that he probably won't ever have a house worth anything near $15 million. Because as long as he's got his family by his side, it doesn't matter. It's just not that important important to him. I don't dream about a big house and a lot of money. I dream that when I die, my children will hold my hand. Clearly an emotional scene, but the accent here was actually too strong for me to understand what he said. Thankfully, I enlisted the help of one of my American friends, so for my fellow non-Americans who might not have understood what he said, apparently it was, I don't dream about a big house or a lot of money, I dream that when I die, my children will hold my hand. And as if that wasn't the sweetest thing ever, he follows it up with this. <sighs> and we're laughing. 
This is actually so emotional. I'm choking up here. You know, I always think that the best videos are the ones that can make you laugh one minute and cry the next. Who'd have thought a random wife swap episode from years ago could have such a profound storyline? Especially one that was the source of so many light-hearted memes. If you enjoy videos like this, by the way, please feel free to subscribe for more. Or if you already are subscribed, please feel free to leave a like to let me know. I love doing stuff like this. And if you guys are enjoying it, I would love to do more. Anyway, that emotional final scene was the end of Joy's two week reign of terror over the family. And with that, it was time to say goodbye. I really hope that I brought a new way of life for the family. Give me your cheek, I, I got it. Nobody will miss Joy. I don't even like her. Although Joy and the family didn't get on very well, she did actually leave her mark. Cliff came to realise that he wanted to be in his kid's life for as long as possible. And a part of making sure that happened was eating a little better and getting some exercise in every now and then. We try to eat healthy at least two nights a week. We really would like to thank Joy for introducing us to fruits, but we took what she done and modified it a little bit to work better in our household. You know what? Progress is progress. They certainly didn't enjoy her presence, but if Joy can say that she helped them eat a little better and live a little healthier, what more can you ask for? And the other household actually learned from Ginger too. She got a dietitian to come round and he explained to Demarcus that restricting things from kids makes them crave it more. Whilst letting them eat whatever they want isn't healthy and can lead to issues like obesity and diabetes, going to the other extreme like telling them to only eat raw vegetables can also cause a range of eating disorders. Well, not only did Demarcus end up allowing his kids to have a cookie or two every now and then, he also took a day off work to throw the kids a party and had a great time. Given he spends almost all day every day working, it was actually really nice to see him enjoy spending time with his kids. And obviously his kids absolutely adored spending time with him too. However, whilst both sets of parents seem to be happier having struck a better balance, Curtis's reign of omnipotence coming to an end left him with nothing but sadness. We have been getting a lot more strict with Curtis. I'm not King Curtis. I'm sad Curtis sitting in a house. I hate vegetables. Always true to himself, right to the very last. After watching this, I went to look up where Curtis is today, and since his iconic appearance on this show back in 2009, he's become a welder, and in his spare time, is a keen huntsman and fisherman. Adorably, despite being an adult now, he recently confirmed that every morning, he and his mother get up and cook bacon together. It seems he continues to live out his dream of being fat and happy. And if that's good enough for King Curtis, it's good enough for me. This is undoubtedly one of my favourite reality TV episodes of all time. And I really hope you enjoyed watching it with me today. If you did and you want to see more like it, please feel free to subscribe down below and feel free to pop by any of my socials to say hi in between uploads. Thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.